Hey boys and girls, here's a wonderful story called One Plastic Bag. It's based on the true story of Isatu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia, a story written by Miranda Paul and illustrated by Elizabeth Sunan. Jao Gambia. Isatu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanuts do drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. Mmm. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isatu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isatu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruit in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isatu as Grandmother Bombay emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful booba. Isatu scurries in and Grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isatu confesses. But I found this. Plastic, Grandmother frowns. Uh, there's more in the city. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wanjo from tiny holes poked in the clear bags. Market trays filled with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, but then two, then ten. Isatu shakes sand of her papers. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isatu grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her, until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isa, too, hears a goat crying and hurries towards Grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides, and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Bombay's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something. But what? Isatu's feet lead her to the old, ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as Grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then ten, 
then a hundred. What can we do? Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bag dries, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Ah, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in, out, around. Jerefeth, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for, Farim? Fatim asks. Isatu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friend think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help. Then two, then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with their hand thread. Nakaligibi? asks grandmother. How is the work? Danka, danka, answers Isatu. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. But I believe that we are doing what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then... One woman lays the lassie coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. Isatu fills her own purse with the lassie. She sips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by piles of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself, one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, it was. This is where it is. Gambia is right there. And it tells the story of how it actually happened. I hope you enjoyed this book, boys and girls. And if you find it in the library or in your local store, do buy it and be inspired by this story.